Thank you for turning to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at something from the From the Ashes box set, The Animus. But before we do, I want to say thank everybody, or thank you to everybody for dealing with my kind of truncated uh, videos the last few weeks. Uh, if you hadn't heard, we are caring for an ill family member uh, who requires 24-7 care. I've been part of that care, so I haven't been able to put as much time into the channel as I've wanted to. But I want to thank everybody for continuing to support the channel, even though I've had to go to a, like a shorter format. Uh, also, just please remind everybody, go ahead and subscribe. If you like the video, please uh, like, take a look at the Patreon. Uh, Patreon's been slipping lately. I use that to fund the channel, so any help you can give me there would be greatly appreciated. But now to the important stuff today, the Animus from the, from the Ashes box set uh, from 1992. The Animus is... An undead creature. It has armor class 10, 12 or 12 inch movement, 14 hit dice. Uh, Thaco is 7. I don't use Thaco. I never have. Uh, uh, special attack, or let's see, uh, damage attack by weapon type plus 4. Special attacks and defenses see below. No MR. And uh, we get down the description down here. The Animus, unique undead creature created by the priests of an evil power. Hextor, with the help of the infernal, of infernal fiendish aid. Animuses, or animi, are driven creatures filled with cold hatred and burning ambition for cruel rulership, the infliction of suffering, and, or some other equally dire goal. Most animi appear to be humans with weathered or wrinkled skin, prematurely aged but clearly strong. Some of them only have an effective charisma of three, and they wear masks to cover their faces. Think of uh, Imhotep in the 1999 Mummy movie, before he's fully regenerated. Uh, they uh, all, Almost all animuses are somewhat vain and dress well as befits their former station in life. Animus creatures were formerly nobles, generals, and advisors to the overking of the great kingdom of the, of the world of Greyhawk and had human lives as priests, warriors, and the like. Uh, now for its combat, it has a plethora of special attacks and defenses which make it a formidable opponent. Animi that had special abilities in their living state by virtue of class, or more rarely by race, still possess those in animus form. Thus, an animus created from a twelfth of a warrior has those attacks per round, and animus created from a priest or magic user would still have their spellcasting ability. They're very strong. They have an 1876 strength and an 18 constitution. Uh, while their ability scores equal those they possessed in life, they radi their touch causes fear. They radiate a circle of command in a ten-yard radius, with a gesture, they can make any creature that fails at saving throw fall to its knees. Uh, that lasts for a round, or a round it can use that once per turn. And Animus also is a domination gaze. A gaze which fails, a victim who fails to make a saving throw against spell is unable to act as long as the Animus continues to stare and does not otherwise attack him. A victim so dominated can have one suggestion implanted into his mind by the Animus that has dominated him. An animus can make no other action on a round in which he uses his domination gaze. So he can kind of freeze you with his stare and then plant a suggestion into your mind that, hey, I like animus, animi. <clears throat> An animus uh, may command non-intelligent undead, such as skeletons and zombies, automatically. Other undead don't care either way about them. They don't necessarily work for them, but they don't work against them. An animus has many immunities and special defenses. It's immune to poison, paralyzation, charm, sleep, hold, magic jar spells, and non-magical weapons. No form of fear will affect an animus. Because the animus is highly intelligent, it cannot be surprised. Animi suffer half or quarter damage from acid, cold, and electrical attacks and are immune to energy drain. If an attempt is made to turn or command an animus, the animus is treated as special on the turning matrix, and the priest attempting to influence the animus makes his attempt as if he were four levels lower than the actual level, and the animus gets a saving throw to negate the turning or commanding. That's pretty cool, because a, a special animus by affected by a high enough level priest, and you you would have to have a cleric who's around twelfth to fourteenth level to deal with one of these things. His turning is pretty solid against it, but he turns as if he's four levels lower, and the animus gets a saving throw versus the turning. I like that a lot. Holy water does two die four damage per flask thrown on animus. And can suffer the effects of diseases, although it cannot, cannot be killed by the disease. I like the idea of an animus with a head cold. I am kind of scared to think about what they'd sneeze out, but it's still kind of a funny thought. Most feared of all is the remarkable 
full difficulty of destroying an Animus. Animi regenerate two hit points per round of combat, but they also regenerate after death. Even severed and separated body parts will crawl back together to reform the body of the Animus. After being reduced to zero hit points, he regenerates one hit point only per turn. The only way to destroy an Animus for sure is to burn the body to ashes or dissolve it completely in acid. As noted, an Animus may use spells if it did so in life. A wizard Animus still needs spell books, magical components, and the like. A priest Animus must still receive the favor of its power to be able to cast spells. I would automatically say that if anybody had been a cleric in life and became an Animus for whatever reason, I would say that the only god they could choose would be Hextor, since Hextor, Hextorian priests are the one that created the Animus in the first place. So that would be my ruling at my table. The origin of the Animus is central to understanding what motivates them. Animi were created largely because, against their wills by priests and fiends serving Ivid V, who was the king of the Great Kingdom, the Overlord. Powerful warriors, wizards, and priests were slain and then revived in Animus form. So basically what you need is somebody to rightly murder you and then bring you back as this Animus. So you're not part of the uh, selection process here. They go ahead and they murder you, and then they perform the ritual, and the thinking was that you would then be unswervingly loyal to the Overking, but in reality, they just created a bunch of really hard-to-destroy underlords who may or may not have wanted to continue to work for Ivid V. Um, if Ivid wanted them because then they'd be able to rule the lands forever and they'd be difficult to destroy, but it kind of backfired on them. Animi are turn, torn between being solitary and having to exist in a social world. An animus has no friends and no longer feels any affiliative needs, loves, friendship, or the need for companionship. Just as it needs no food or drink and other bodily pleasures or sustenance. The motivations that drive an animus are dark, revenge, hatred, fury. So basically, these not guys are not happy campers. They were murdered against their will uh, by their their ruler, Ivid V, by his Hextorian priests, and brought back as these Animi who are going to go ahead and continue to serve forever under the thumb of the Overking, and they're going, well, why am I serving under this guy? The funny thing is, if you continue to read the From the Ashes stuff of the world of Greyhawk, is that Ivid himself becomes an Animus. He gets murdered. We don't ever know if it was you know, kind of with his consent or not, and re brought back as an Animus. I, I thought that was a really nice touch. So he's uh, an undead nasty sitting on the throne of the Great Kingdom. Um, the exact process by which Animi have been brought about is unknown. What is known is the priests of Hextor, using a resurrection spell together with fiends, work on the corpse and spirit of a slain human to create the Animus, working its magical defenses into its body and affecting its spirits. Ivid wanted single-minded, utterly loyal servants. What the priests and fiends created was a creature with the capacity to be ferociously single-minded and cold in its motivation and utterly implacable in its pursuit of what it wanted. How they did that and whether the result was exactly what they wanted is not clear. It's rumored that some animi have special attacks or defenses. Uh, Savfrin, the animus ruler of Old Almor, is said to have a skin as tough as iron and be resistant to attacks with edged weapons. The animus priest Delgath of Rinloru is said to be able to raise blisters in the palms of his hands, which, which, with which he can secrete a terrible burning corrosive acid without any harm to himself, but which he uses when shaking hands with a terrified prisoner while smiling in triumph. Delgath's blessing is the phrase whispered in Rinlaro to refer to the dread touch. Finally, note that as a result of their creation, many animi, animus creatures, are as paranoid as they are arrogant. Animuses, animi with enemies see real and imagine see enemies all around them. They are usually obsessed with assassination, even to the point that they have their food tested for poison, despite the fact they cannot be slain by poison. Animi often rationalize this by saying they cannot be certain that no poison found anywhere can kill them, so why take chances? Some animi, the more intelligent of the breed, have detached ironic insight into their own paranoia, but again, this is a rarity. So there you have it, a quick look at the Animus. I love these guys. These would fit beautifully into Ravenloft, in my opinion, by the way, and beautifully into what the Old Kingdom becomes as we go through the From the Ashes set and then some of the following works from uh, Carl Sargent. These are unhappy creatures who are, are stuck in an undead life they didn't ever select or want, and they're very lich-like. 
but it wasn't through anything that they tried to do. It was something that was literally put upon them. So there you have it. That's a quick look at the Animus. I've used several of these in my Greyhawk campaign. Uh, I love these guys. They make for a great tragic villain. If you're looking for a villain who can generate a little sympathy, sympathy he was created to be a villain through his own murder. So it kind of writes itself. That's why these would be great uh, Ravenloft uh, antagonists slash protagonists. So that's all I've got to say today from page 121. I want to thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Please leave some comments below, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.